Hi guys, my name is Meads. This is going to be a review for the Metal Build Arbalist. This is part of the TV animation series Full Metal Panic. Got mine recently from Tato Hobby, actually yesterday, and can't wait to check this out. Now, this is going to be a blind review, meaning I know little or none at all about the character or figure that I bought, other than I find it very awesome looking, very intriguing. And there are a few times where I've done, uh, I've done that, where I bought the figure, then I ended up watching the series and really liking it. Uh, one of which is Gal Gai Gar, uh, and I think even Gurren Lagann. Yeah, I've bought the figures first, they're cool looking mechs, and really enjoy the anime. So I started watching uh, this uh, series, the Full Metal Panic, and actually I think way back I watched the Fumofu one, which is kind of like the candid version of the anime series. Yeah, gotta love those Bontakuns. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what they call this, you know, like mobile suit for Gundams. Is this an arm sleeve or something like that? I just started the series, but uh, really cool looking. And I think the stock model is the Gurren's back. But yeah, and I think the later on you get the Leviathan. They already have a middle build Leviathan. I'm hoping for a reissue. So anyways, uh, enough that uh, <laughs> precursor of buying this. So here's the side of the box. Get a, a bit of a side view of the head. So you got the name there, Arbalist. On the back side, uh, we got a bit more details. I did build an SD version of this. Kodobuki has the D style line, and I had one of those little chibi ones. Really cool looking. And I do remember that you can put the knife in front of his mouth. It's a weird way of putting it, but yeah. And uh, the shoulder does open out, it's like, like vents. Uh, this is quite nice. Um, seems like we getting some kind of a hangar or a station. That's a lot of stuff right there. Huh, interesting. Here's the side. You can see uh, one of the guys there working. There we go. Hmm, seems like uh, I need some paint on that one. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's it for the box. Let's take a look inside. Here's the instruction booklet. It does say version 4. I think, uh, well, my friend uh, mentioned that it might have coincided with the new series. Or maybe season 4 or something like that. And also, this is a very thin instruction booklet. <laughs> we got a parts count here. A lot of uh, tiny pieces. Well, mostly connectors. And uh, yeah, just a lot. A variety of hands. Instructions on how to move open panels and stuff like that. Uh, the cockpit so we're gonna go over this again but I just want to show the instruction booklet and I even have that post right there where you can get connect uh, I guess some kind of generator or something to hook up on the head hmm. I wonder if you're, that's where you get the data from or something like that now this is also really cool that it has this uh, setup here Basically, you can put all the parts, all the uh, part swapping, yeah, and even the rifle. Everyone uh, or everything has a holster that goes into this mechanical base. And I really like even the hands. Yep, even the tweezers has a section on the back. Let me see it here. Really nice. I like that. So there you go, instruction booklet. All right, so here we go. We have a uh, the hanger. I actually talked to Type D three, and he said that it's kind of like the same setup with the Leviathan. So that's such great news. Now this is my first time having uh, like this kind of like add on uh, with the uh, with the base. So that's quite nice. And uh, we have a pallet here, molded in one plastic. It does come with a clear like an extension, or I mean for a base, it's gonna help him stand. You also have, let's see if I, there we go. You also have an engineer right here, molded in the same way. And just based on their, on the size of the humans here, or the personnel, oops. This is not as big as a gun, definitely a lot smaller. But in terms of uh, how tall they are as a figure, we're looking at about, got my ruler here, uh, seven and a half inch, around there. So it's still a good uh, size figure. Um, 
It's kind of hard to about 19 and a half centimeters. Yeah, quite nice. It also comes with this kind of like a boom lift, and uh, this kind of goes with that. We'll uh, go over this in a bit when we go in that uh, section where I guess they're doing diagnostics on to the arbalist. So let me take this out of the way and uh, let me remove the arbalest right here so there's actually a stand on the back here there's also another actually you gotta put the all the zip back here but there's another stand connector that you can use i guess that's gonna be a little closer here but i like the setup because you have all the extra stuff on the back here you know from the extra fins all the hands even the faceplate they're all in that really nice uh like a uh, stash here <laughs> even the extra shoulder armors and i really like that i kind of wish there's more weaponry but yeah, i think that's that's what we have here uh, we got the shotgun and you have the knives here it's like a nice uh, weapon stash and you also have like the grenades on the bottom here really nice setup I like this all right so let's uh, detach the arbalist there we go just mounted on the back side of the skirt and yeah just we're probably gonna pop this out here we're gonna be using that what else we're gonna take out from this probably this for now actually oh yeah we, we, we can take this out too. The weapons. You got the ammo pack here. You can just use one. Or you can attach this onto the side here. Which is actually nice that the, you can do that. Or have an extended clip. So I think that's a really cool gimmick. And I think you can mount this onto the side also. Which I will do. Um... There's a little attachment. I'm trying to look for it. Oh, there we go. There's the attachment on the back here. I'm trying to grab it. This is to clip in the shotgun on his back. I'll be using that, but I think for now, maybe grab a few of this and a grenade. Yep. <laughs> All right, then let me just uh, reset my set up here and continue to review now let's make a comparison and for those who are not uh, this is the first time you're seeing a metal build and how it is compared to other figures out there let's say a robot spirits so i have the Gundam mark 2 here and as you know aside from the size as you can see we can also do some weights uh, now metal build as the name implies will have some metal on it die cast parts and i do have a scale here which I use for spinners. I know it's, it sounds a little crazy why you have a scale, but it's a great indication on how heavy things are. You know, that's what we use it for. But a uh, you know, certain weight, oh, well, it's it's just a way to quantify things. I think that's the best way to put it. All right, so a robot spirits for Mark II, it's about 60 grams. Now let's weigh a middle build. Kind of give you an idea how they are. It's about 325 grams. More or less five times as heavy as a robot spirits. And that kind of gives you an idea how how much die cast content on that. You know, granted that uh, a, probably a bigger scale of this is probably going to be 90 grams or so. Like a master grade size of plastic. But, you know. 325 that's a lot of weight all right so uh, i just want to give that comparison and kind of uh, show an appreciation on how much die cast part on this five times more heavier all right so uh let's start with the pilot gotta put the pilot right uh we got like a half <laughs> section of this person here uh we're gonna flip this over and there's a little tab there, which we're going to just slide in. Oh, that's not a good. 
right, let's see if I can align this. There's actually tweezers. Or plastic tweezers. Let me see if that would actually help. Sorta. Of. There we go. I'm just gonna push that in. I think that's good enough. And there we go. Now this has a lot of interesting uh, panels, which we'll do in a bit. I'll probably go with the uh, articulation first, but nice, nice details. They got a lot of uh, the decals, decals <laughs> here and there. Alter out the body. All right. So uh, starting with the head, we can tilt forward a lot because of that. You can also tilt up. Get some nice metallic green for the eyes. There we go. Side to side. Just gotta be careful though, because you cannot really go that far to that to this edge there. But very good neck articulation. Moving on, uh, we have the shoulder. Now this thing is on a hinge with a C-clip here. So we've seen there's an extra shoulder joint that we can pop this out like so. There we go. And now we can move this up. Rotate this around. You got your bicep swivel, double jointed elbows. Which gives you that much articulation there, which is quite nice. And you got your wrist. I don't think there's anything for the forearm. Right. Now for the torso. Or actually there is a bit more in the shoulder. You can move forward a little bit. Uh, no, not so much for the back. But yeah. Now there are... Let me just... There we go. <laughs> Some panels. Uh, for the torso, you can uh, do an up crunch. You can actually see a hinge there. On the back, but move forward, back, side to side, and you get that waist pivot there. Really nice. Moving down the waist. Now, I thought this was a waist skirt that is independent, uh, actually, isn't. So, <laughs> including this one too. It's kind of fixed with the whole thigh area there. Now, the back. You can move this up. I think it's on a ball joint there. And let's see here. You can uh, move to the side. Same thing on the other. We can move forward up. Although, you can actually push this up here. There we go. Now, I'm wondering. If I'm doing this right, is there a way? It feels like I can lower this down. Huh. Actually, let me double check that first. Yeah, so look at the instruction. Uh, yeah, I think this is the only way. Uh, make sure that thing is raised. That the uh, arm on the waist area. Then you just kind of move this up. Now, it did say that there might be some rubbing. Which not a fun, I'm not a fan, but it feels like, oh, there we go, that's, ah, there. You can lower this whole thing down. And raise this up, just making sure that you don't hit that. Otherwise, you're going to rub some paint off. So, there we go. <laughs> then, we got the knee bend here. I wonder if that's uh, some kind of, hmm. I mean, it has a really nice paint on the knee. It's kind of like a gun metal. There we go. So, uh, that much a knee bend there. And, yeah, that's, that's actually a fairly good uh, knee bend. So uh, let's put that back. It's a lot of joints there. <laughs> oh man, die cast joints. Just gotta be careful. All right, let's uh 
There. I think I already kind of scratched that. Did I? Anyways, moving on, we got the ankle here. You can actually move this around. This is... How is this? Oh, it's connected on the back. There's a ball joint there. But uh, you can also tilt. Move that far. Front. Try to do a... Can't seem to do a, an ankle tilt. There we go. So it is possible. This one's just a little stiff. But you can do a wide stance with that. You got a bit of a toe joint right there. I just gotta be really careful on the joint. It's just, yeah, the whole leg is the, I guess the frame is die cast. It's one of the reasons I'm not too fond of die cast. It's articulation is quite limited, but you know, trade off is you got a really nice hefty figure. You just you feel the quality when you lift something that's heavy. But eh, it's me. I like artic my articulation. All right, so let's see what else we can go over. We went over articulation. Now let's go over uh, some of the weapons. All right, so uh, let's start with the thing on the back here. You can actually pop this out, replace it with this. And uh, let's see. Yep, there's only one way to put it on. You can put on the knife. I think he goes this way. So you can position any any other position, this way or the other. I can't remember if it's left or right-handed, but there you go. You can also put the shotgun. in here uh, close it first there we go and there kind of want to put the knife there more so than the shotgun <laughs> yeah so it, it's a nice gimmick now for this get the nice uh, blade uh, it's painted get that nice uh, matte finish like tactile knife and uh, sheet right here now I guess you can also connect this it there's a peg onto the side here there you go I kind of wish you can put it on the forearm also or something like that I mean there is that knife that goes on his mouth which is I find it a little odd but uh, you can put that actually you know what I'm probably doing this wrong he might be left-handed <laughs> I want to put that one there and I want to put one of the ammo packs on this side it's the same pack connection so there you go let's go ahead and replace the one for the face all right, so let's see how I'm gonna do this. So this is the separate piece. All right, so I guess the whole malt guard kind of pops off. And good thing I have long nails. Otherwise, this is gonna be difficult. There we go. Oh. <laughs> All right. And uh, put this on here, it should just slide in. Yes, it's such a weird uh, design having it on his mouth, but I guess you see, it's like in movies where someone will hold the knife on their mouth. I don't know why, it's just easily reached that way. So that's that. I don't know if I want to keep it that way. <laughs> Let's put it back. I like this one a bit more. 
So it, it's kind of interesting. Uh, it's like an extension. Like everything in terms of having a knife, a, a shotgun, just upscaled. Because why would you use a knife against another... Uh, I guess they call it the slave arm. They're, they're robots or mechs. I mean, how, how this can pierce something else, right? <laughs> Alright, so other than that, let's go ahead and swap some hands. Um, so there is a bit of uh, weapons. Actually, while we're at it, uh, we can... Let's take this out here. We can uh, open this up. There's a panel here. This is just a handle, actually. Let's see if we can even take out. Probably use the tweezers here. Obviously, there's no grip on plastic. But this is just pegged in. You know what? I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, the other side, though, it's a little different. This one. This to me kind of looks like uh, one of the grenades or some sort. So uh, they are a little different. Let's uh, pop this out. Actually, sorry, I keep changing my mind. There's another cool gimmick here. Alright. So. While we're at it, it's kind of like a grappling hook or maybe some kind of a, a way to worst that piece. I left it on the hanger. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, so this is it. So this kind of has a hook at the end. If I can open it. Yeah, it, I guess it latches on something. You got the metal wire here, and I guess this one just connects on that. I'm not even sure how good that connection is, but it pegs in. So it kind of has this grappling hook thing, which is cool. Just uh, a little hard to put on otherwise we'll go ahead and uh, swap out using this hand I like that it's straight it's a lot easier than having a ball joint wrist connection although I'm still having problems putting another one in another thing I noticed too is the hands the fingers are really smooth not quite a you know robot hands so I feel like it's missing some details on that. <laughs> it's a little weird. Then uh, you have this kind of like grenades or maybe flash flashbangs or something. Or maybe smoke grenades. So there's that. Um, otherwise, let's go grab the other hand here. Just bear with me. <laughs> oh, why is it so hard to swap? Alright, so uh, this one, it's a bit of an angle. But... Actually, can you even reach the back of that angle? Hmm. I guess it sort of can. Maybe. I just wanted to try that out. But, um, I'm gonna use a tactical knife. It's a little flexible. There we go. Or you can use this daggers here. But yeah, it's, where is that? Piece, the thing that goes on the mouth. 
this is too small compared to this and even on the one on underneath the chest it's I guess in the anime it just kind of <laughs> it made they made it to work but there we go you can hold the knife like this or hold the knife this way I guess if you want to cut someone like this so you got those options there uh, what else we got here let's swap the hands that way we can hold the shotgun all right so uh, I did a little bit of <laughs> research I guess the thing that goes on his mouth is an anti-tank dagger I guess he can throw that and destroy tanks well tanks are smaller and not as I mean, you have enough weight on this, he can pierce through a lot of things, so I guess that's one way to put it. Alright, so looking at this, you can actually put uh, pull the stock back here. I think that's kind of how it is. And uh, it's a pump action also. I'm not sure if they call this maybe a scatter shot or it's a shotgun essentially. It's nice that you have this movable piece here. I like that. Alright, so let's see if I can even put this on here. Alright, there we go. Yeah, the stock maybe goes to the, this section here. Yeah, sure. <laughs> That's actually nice. Alright, I did a bit of uh, posing here. It's just, it's really hard to do a pose while recording. It's It takes a little bit more time and just trying to get the right joints and you gotta get it close to, your, close to you to get a feel for it. It's kind of hard when I'm reaching over you know, behind the camera. But uh, here we go. Yeah, I like this pose here. Very nice. And then uh, you can have him as if he's uh, yeah, pumping that shotgun for reload. So, I like that weapon. <laughs> Next up, I think that's pretty much it uh, in terms of weaponry. He has technically three daggers that he can wield and that shotgun. Yeah, not much into weapons and in the, in the grappling thing. Uh, let's move on on go over the I guess the lambda driver where you, there's a lot of panels that uh, you can open up as well as the vents All right, here comes the fun part. Let's open up all the panels <laughs> All right, so On the back here There's this panel that opens up To reveal those I guess it's part of the lambda driver there we go. There's also some on the front of the chest. Although this one is a bit tricky and actually kind of want to open up this one first on the bottom here. Before I can open this up. Yeah, just bear with me. There we go. And I wonder if I can, yep, I can. So uh, this one opens up and it's not like a cube in there. Same thing on the other side. Uh, let's open this up first. Oh, jeez. <laughs> there we go. All right, what else we can open up? Um, this back section actually opens up too. So, uh, you can actually detach the whole thing. It's kind of interesting. So, we're not, let's not push the whole thing out. Hmm. I guess it, it does 
open up. All right, just not enough for it to be detached. And there are panels, the metallic things. So first off, the bottom. Kind of curious how you gotta put this on here. There we go. Then uh, the top part, this one. Huh. Yes, it goes like that. Interesting. <laughs> so the one that is squared off, like that. That the one. That's the one that goes on the bottom. Then the other one. Where's the other one? This one here, which is kind of curved, goes on top. And uh, this feels like die cast pieces. Although the finish on them could be a little bit better. Yep. Hmm, not bad. Now for the shoulder here, you can actually pop this up here. Open this up. There's another one there. Then uh, you can open this flap here. Kind of reveal that. So there you go. But, and you can do the same thing on the other side. But it's better off just uh, taking this all off and replacing it with an already open one with more fins that are yeah so we're just gonna go ahead and swap that out and honestly I don't mind that having swappable parts since getting that thing to open up and if I were to put more of these metal plates there, like on the back, that's going to be a little troublesome. So I'm okay with swappable shoulder armor. Not to mention they have like a, a stash on the hanger to put those on. Alright, so uh, a little bit more. This can uh, open up. Same on the other side. It's an interesting power power up for him. This one goes down. Let's see down the side. I think this one goes down. This one goes up a little bit. Yeah, it's more of those little things. This one just goes down for the knee, and I think there's some on the back side as well. Definitely you want to have long nails on this. <laughs> Alright. And I think that's pretty much it. And I this kind of gives him, I guess, uh, extraordinary speed. I mean, those fins are kind of like vents. I would have shown them. It's kind of like F91. Where you, it generates a lot of heat, especially if you have some kind of nuclear reactor on, you know, for a power source. That's just my assumption. I'm gonna watch the show to see a bit more. But yeah, there we go. Um, not too much for transformation. I mean, just you know, a lot of panels to open up. But I like it. It's a little, little uh, intricate uh, details. Uh, kind of makes it cool. All right, I'm gonna go do another pose and probably with the knife, and let's see how that works. All right, so here's a pose that I come up with. I'm sure there's a lot of other cooler poses, but it's something that I have to watch the show to kind of have an idea what some of the iconic poses are. But granted that his weapons, he's kind of like in the realm of a soldier. 
uh, in terms of uh, you know, the movements. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> uh, other than that, you have the lift here, which I'm not gonna go and do that pose. I find it a little silly. This one here, where it connects to the side of the head, you know, it's you see a diagram there. That's it. I'm not gonna do that, but I'm gonna just quickly go over this. So this side here, actually you can take that off, but you do have a, a swivel point right there. And this whole thing is kind of weird how it's connected. You have a like a guide rod there, which is plastic. And this is kind of scary, actually, when you try to push this up, down. So just got to be careful. There we go. Then you got the lift. You got a hinge there and there. And that's pretty much it for that. There are two connecting points. And I would say be careful as you try to push this on. Try not to hold on to the rails. They're plastic. They're going to snap off. And this square pegs are not that. It's kind of that tricky to put them on. So there you go. There you got two uh, mounting points. It's quite nice and you have an engineer here for your little diorama so it's actually quite nice all right lastly you're gonna find this little piece here on the right and I took out the let's see if I get focus here the pilot it's identically the same this is the seat as you can see this is like the chest uh, part yeah, so if you don't have, if you don't want the pallet to be, or just an empty seat, you have the same peg underneath. That's what it's for. Anyways, that's about it for this review. Hope you guys like it. Again, got mine from Tatsu Hobby. And, and as always, if you're into metal builds, be sure to pre order them. Otherwise, it's going to be hard to uh, track you down afterwards. More than often, you're going to be paying premium from the secondary market. Yep. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, um, overall, to be honest with the Arbalest, I like it, especially with the swappable pieces on the chest, or I mean the shoulder armor, that's actually a nice idea, I, I don't mind it at all, it's great, I really like the hanger where you can put everything, all the extra parts, uh, even the back here with this fins, it looks amazing, I like that a lot, I'm just not a fan of... Some of the articulation here on the leg. I mean, it's like us. It's to be expected, but it's rather stiff. It's kind of hard to get into a nice pose. The waist area, though, where you can uh, push this down, that's a great idea. I like that. Just that uh, there are certain pieces that I'm just afraid that it's going to rub off. So hopefully not too much of that. But overall, I like it. If you like uh, Full Metal Panic, you like the Arbalist, go for it I think it's a great figure um, I think there are other so like smaller version of this was there a robot spirits I think it might have just been Revol Tech. I remember getting the Leviathan Revol Tech with a flight pack but I mean there's a lot of Kotobuki uh, ball kits and I think Mana even made a new one for the Arbalus so yeah definitely check those out as well and that's about it. So until then, this is Meads. Thanks for watching.